Oh, hi there. Thanks for showing up for your learning. Let's do some periodic word problems. All right. So let's uh, zoom in on question three. So John, he's floating in a wave tank. Nice, John. At time is one second. He reaches a maximum of 14 meters above the bottom of the pool. At time equals nine, he makes a minimum height of two meters. All right. So let's see, if this was 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, we could do a scale of 2 here. So let's do that, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so that's my 10, and then uh, 12, 14, there's my maximum. So I go ahead and I put a little dotty line along my maximum. The minimum was uh, uh, 2 meters above the bottom of the pool, so let's do a little dotty line along the minimum. The x-axis, coincidentally, is the bottom of the graph down there. And the midline between 2 and 14 is 8. So I can put a little dotty line along there. Right. So um, these are the things that we've already discovered. Uh, maximum, it was told to us. Minimum, it was told to us. And then you do 14 plus 2 divided by uh, two, and that will give you the midline. Uh, this is uh, eight, and then the amplitude here is just six. You you could get that by doing fourteen minus two divided by two, and that will give you six. Or you can just say like, look, I know fourteen is six above eight, and I know two is six below eight, so that's my amplitude. All right, now let's go ahead and and plot our points. Okay, at time is equal to one second. Okay, so we're definitely going to have like this is one. And uh, he's at the maximum, so he's up there. All right, let's use another color. We'll use black. Yeah, cool. So he's up there at time is one. And then at nine seconds, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, he's down there. All right. Now, um, what we know is from one to nine, that's eight seconds. And that tells me that we've gone through half a period it takes half a period to go from a maximum to a minimum. Um, so the period is 16. So if I go over another 8, so 9 plus 8 would give me 17. So then we're going to go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and we're back to the maximum there. All right. Then we could go over another 8. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That should be 25. And we're back down to the minimum. Okay. And so we've got a lot of information already. Uh, we can also find the midline points, and they're halfway in between the maximums and the minimums. So they're four each, so that's there. And then one, two, three, four, that's there. And one, two, three, four, that's there. Okay? So this is what I'm expecting to see. I'm expecting to see us come up, come down, down the wave, up the wave. Something that looks like this. And it's going to continue. Yeah. Maybe a little higher there. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the waves and what they're going to look like over time. Time T. Okay, and this is height H. All right, so what? write an equation in terms of sine and cosine. All right, fine, if you insist. All right, so uh, H of T is equal to, well, we know the amplitude. It was 8. Was it? No. Oh, six, six, uh, and we're gonna do sine first. Sine of bracket. What's the period? Well, the period was uh, sixteen, so I need to go um, three sixty divided by sixteen to find uh, k. I believe that was like twenty two point five or something weird. Calculator three sixty divided by sixteen gives us twenty two and a half. I, I'm not in a state to do that in my head. I just remembered that because I calculated that like recently. It's 22 and a half uh, multiplied by x minus d. We don't know d yet. And then we're going to do plus uh, midline is 8. Okay. Now let's take one of these points. Oh, let's, we could, let's work with a maximum. It's going to be the easiest one to work with. So we can, uh, well, here's another thing that we could do. Okay. Because I know exactly where it's crossing the midline, I can just use transformations here, all right? This point is, uh, let's see if I remember, that's 9, that should be 13. 
This is uh, the point 13, comma, 8. Oh, gosh. Someone else loves Fibonacci numbers. Oh, cool. So that's uh, this has been shifted to the right by 13. So D will be 13. So here is one. H of T equals 6 sine 22.5 times X minus 13 plus 8. How did you do that without algebra? Well, I know that sine starts at the midline and goes up. So that's normally the starting position of sine. If we didn't have a D transformation, that point would have been there. But we moved it that way to the right by 13. So I'm just going to use transformations to know that instead of calculate that. So uh, if I, I want to check my work in Desmos, since this is a, an assignment, I can do that. I would say h of t, we'll use h of x, is equal to, uh, we said it was 6 sine brackets 22.5 bracket x minus 13 end bracket, end bracket, plus Yeah, it was. That was our function. Yeah, right. And so what's wrong here? Oh, right. Uh, it's uh, uh, This is the problem. We're not in degrees. There we go. So now let's look at it. Oh, looks pretty familiar. Oh, yeah, there it is. There's uh, 0.114. There's 0.92. There's the, uh, add the period, 1714. Okay, it works, it works, all right? What if I don't like the number minus 13? Well, I would talk to you and I would say, well, why don't you like the number minus 13? You could add 22.5 to it if you wanted it to be a positive number. Um, and we could also work with a cosine here. Let's create a cosine curve. I'm just going to flip that to cosine. Oh man, that's a different transformation of the same thing. Here's my untransformed cosine curve. All I need to do is shift that to the right by 1. So I'm going to go x minus 1. There we go. And notice that that's the new curve. So there is the d value for cosine. Right? That's all you need to do. Uh, now, what if you don't have these fancy schmancy transformation skills? Then you calculate here. Okay. So now let's go ahead and grab this point. It's the point 114, as we just saw and then sub it in here. So h at 1 is equal to 14. That's the output of the function, which is equal to 6 sine uh, 22.5 multiplied by 1 minus d. Okay, we don't know this yet. We're pretending we don't know that yet. Okay, plus 8. Okay, I'm going to take this function, put it up here so I have some more space. I don't need to zoom into crazy levels. Oh, hold on. Got a... Uh... All right, we just had to discuss this uh, uh, very important math problem for a moment. Now we're back. All right, so I'm going to take that function. I'm going to put it up here, and we're going to evaluate. Okay, so um, first thing I'm going to do before I bring it up is I'm just going to do one of my inverse operations. If I'm going to copy that, I'm going to do this inverse operation. So 14 minus 8 is 6. So 6 equals 6 sine um, 22.5. I'm going to multiply this in as well minus 22.5d, okay? And then we're going to divide both sides by 6. So that's going to give us 1 is equal to sine of that stuff, 22.5 minus 22.5d. And then we take the inverse sine of both sides. Sine is 1 at 90 degrees, okay? So the inverse sine, when I do sine inverse here, Sine inverse of 1, your calculator tells you that's 90. So that's going to be 90 equals, that's going to cancel because I sine inversed it. So that's 90 is equal to 22.5 minus 22.5d. At that point, you can divide both sides by 22.5. Let's do that. 90 divided by 22.5 equals 4. So 4 equals, remember, we divided both sides of the equation by 22.5, so it's just 1 minus d, and d is uh, 5. Why is d 5? <laughs> Why is d 5? Um, well, doesn't that make sense in some way? Let's see. What do we have? We were saying that we wanted d to be minus 13. Wait, wait, what? Oh, no. 
what's going on? So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, 114, our other one works. So we must have the mistake here. So if D is, no, D is not five. D is minus six. Wait, I am so, no, D is minus five, minus five. My, my, oh my goodness. No, minus three. Oh, geez. Do the algebra, Mr. Jennings. Oh, my goodness. Um, I think we all need a holiday. It's the 21st of December, and we're usually on break by now. I think my brain is like, just like, I, I this is just, just, just ah, ah, <laughs> D equals negative three. Okay, D equals negative three, and there's no contradiction. Okay, there's no contradiction. It's the same thing as, as having D is positive 13. Because if I, let's say, I'm just going to duplicate this one, and we're going to say done. And then we have, there, this one sign. I'm going to turn that off, put that on. And I'm going to make that plus three. Plus three. There. Same. Look, they're the same function. Okay. Why? Because negative 13 and positive three, because D is a sign flipper, I put the negative three in there as positive three, okay, uh, is... Uh, is separated by the period, so that's why. All right. So, uh, congratulations! You got to see me have a mini meltdown over not being able to solve a one-step algebraic equation correctly, and finding all kinds of different values that were confusing me in all kinds of different ways. So, uh, we've all been there, and we'll all be there again. Uh, making mistakes in math is is a periodic thing. Sometimes everything goes well, you're on the top of the world. Other times you just make a bunch of mistakes and nothing is working. But don't worry, it gets better. All right. Bye for now, everyone. Any questions, have an email.